Robert Program Midweek Devotions. For our Midweek Devotions segment, we tackle biblical questions. For today, the question is, what does it mean for the statement, all have sinned? Now, in Book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, sin is breaking the law of God. And according to 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4, sin is lawlessness. And sin is a deviation from, from the will of God. It is open rebellion and disobedience of what God has declared is right. Now, sin can only be properly understood concerning God since God is the Holy One. According to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, Be holy, for I am holy. Therefore, All sin is unholy. Now in the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 12, the Bible declares, Therefore, just as through one man's sin entered into the world, and then through sin, and so then spread to all mankind because all sin. The point of the statement, all sin, is that all humanity participated in Adam's sin were condemned to death. And that every child bring into the world, even before a child can be held accountable for personal sin, he or she is naturally prone to disobey, to tell a lies, and etc., Every child is born with a sinful nature. St. Augustine explained Adam's transmission of his sin to us is the theory of what we call federal headship. He taught that Adam's sin was imputed or credited to the entire human race. And now, we are all declared guilty for Adam's sin. In Psalm chapter 14, verse 2, the Bible says, The Lord looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. And what does God find? In verse 3 it says, All have torn aside. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. In other words, all have sin. Therefore, every person who ever lived on earth sin except Jesus Christ, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. In the book of Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2, it says, But your sins have made you a separation between you and your God. In fact, in the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death. Therefore, to sin is to break God's law. And it requires judgment. And the judgment is known as eternal damnation, which is the righteous judgment of God upon sinner. However, Jesus died to forgive us our sin. Jesus came to take our place and to die for our sin. In fact, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, it says, He who brought our sins in His body upon the cross so that we might die to sin and live 
for righteousness. By his wounds, you were healed. This means that Jesus bore our sins in his body on the cross and paid for them. He took the judgment upon himself. And that anyone who trusts in what he did on the cross will have his sin forgiven. He will be saved from God's future judgment. And here's my question. Where are you? Are you in the place of God's judgment or salvation in Christ? Friends, I want to challenge you today. If you are listening to this broadcast, come to Jesus today and be saved. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for reminding us through your word that indeed all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice on the cross for us to be saved. We praise you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you have some questions, or prayer request, you can send them to the number 0947-922-0430. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Once again, this is Pastor Robert of Living Word Global Ministries Morning Service. Thanks for watching.